By the end of this video, you're going to be able to replicate this exact modern farmhouse in Archicad 25, even if you've never used the program before. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And on this channel, we talk all things architecture and technology. But without further ado, let's turn around and get started with today's tutorial. So today we're gonna to be starting with this modern farmhouse design and we're gonna be replicating it in Arcad 25. It is relatively simple, it is relatively straightforward to create. It is basically two boxes intersecting together with a pitched roof and some unique claddings. So what we're gonna be focusing on is a little bit of the architectural detailing and the style more than anything. I'm gonna go through a lot more of this cladding system in detail in my next video. So if you wanna check that out, it'll be coming out next week. Make sure you subscribe for that one. Let's start by using our slab tool and our rectangular slab section. And next we're gonna draw a 20 meter box by let's say seven meters wide. Gives us a relatively nice shape. Next, we're gonna click on that general slab, click on one of the nodes, hit the plus button. And then somewhere along this rear right hand side, we're just gonna simply draw another extension of that property. So let's make this five meters wide and seven meters long. So that's looking a little bit too long for me personally. So I'm gonna select the outer line, click on it once, go up to the top and basically offset my edge and I'm gonna type in 2000 for two meters. Now, as you can see, we've got the starting point of our actual shape, coming into marquee, selecting the whole marquee, making sure that you have the thick dash line selected so you can see everything. Right click, show marquee in 3D. You're gonna see that we've created a very generic slab for a starting point. Coming back to our ground floor plan, let's click on our wall tool. Let's select walls external, any wall type that you want. Because we are going a cladded system, I'm going to go for a stud partition wall and simply draw the outside perimeter of this house. When you finish drawing the house, you can come back into 3D. You can see that our walls have quickly been erected and they're basically ready to go. That's one of the best things about ArcCAD. You don't have to draw over and over again. Coming back to our ground floor plan, we're gonna press Command Up to go to our roof or our ceiling. Right click on the floor below that we were just using and go Show as Trace Reference. So now we see the floor below us and we can start creating our roof. If we come across to our roof tool, select the multi-pane roof tool and simply follow the outside of the roof itself. Once you finish that off, you're gonna see a very generic roof structure, which isn't at all what we want. So what we're gonna do is right click on that roof and go split into single pane roofs. It's gonna come up with a little bit of a warning. We're gonna split anyway. Next, we're gonna click Alt and G or Option G, depending on your system and we're gonna delete these three sections here by simply clicking on them and deleting. Next, we're gonna select two of these roof panes, select one of the hot nodes and click on our adjustment tool, hold shift so it aligns and make our first gable. Now I'm gonna repeat that with the other two remaining sides as well. And there we go, now we have our three gable roofs coming into our 3D. We're gonna see that we've created that very simple roof structure. What I can tell straight away is that roof structure is way too low. So I'm gonna increase the overall pitch to about 30 degrees, maybe even 35 degrees to simply make this a very high pitched roof. Now coming back to our inspirational photo here, we can see that the roof has no eaves, no overhang whatsoever. So we'll come back to our roof floor plan. We're gonna show this as our trace reference again. If you can't see anything underneath, we're gonna come across up top to our trace reference section and make sure it is see-through by selecting that last little icon on the right hand side. Next what we're going to do is simply select one of the edges and offset them all the way back in line with our walls. So it's as simple as that, I'm going to repeat the process for the rest of this house. And there we have it, I've offset all those roof lines in line with the outside of the walls. So now if I come back into 3D, we'll see that we have no more overhangs and no more eaves. The next thing we wanna do is select one of these gable end walls, select one of the hot link nodes and extend it past the top of our roof. I'm gonna repeat the same for the other two. And then I'm gonna select my three walls, right click, connect, and then solid element operations. By selecting solid element operations after we've selected those walls, it automatically selects them as a target. Next, we can select all of our roof structure, go add as operator, subtract with upwards extrusion and execute. There we go. 
Simple as that, we cut off all of our walls very, very rapidly and leave nothing but the general shape that we're working with. If you're an architect student or anybody in the architecture industry, make sure you check out davidtomage.com.au for all of your digital architectural requirements. One of the best things on the site is the construction checklist. It will basically give you a fundamental starting point of everything that needs to be on a set of architectural documents before it goes out for construction. It doesn't matter if you're a student or even if you're a seasoned professional, this checklist is going to make sure your work is better every single day. Now what we're left with is the basic shell and the basic structure that we're trying to replicate in this image here on the left hand side, which is becoming very, very simple, very, very quick for us. So next we're gonna introduce a few sliding windows, a few sliding doors and replicate that shape around the outside. So if we come back into our ground floor plan, go to our window tool on the left hand side, open up the window settings either here or by pressing command T, typing in window as an example, and then, then selecting one of the windows available to you in Archicad. So for instance, I'm simply gonna select that window at the very top. I'm going to make it about three meters wide and 1500 tall, seems approximately right. And all I'm going to do then is introduce this into the project on this side here, coming back into 3D to see what we've created. What we've done is replicated a very similar window. It needs to be a little bit taller, so I'm going to extend the height of that window up to the top. And next, I'm gonna open up those settings and change the actual settings so it matches the black monument style we have in this reference image. So coming up to our settings, going to model attributes and simply changing our frame style to monument, we create a very similar window as to what we see in our reference image. What I'm gonna do now is simply replicate a few more of those windows by holding the Alt button and tapping it a couple more times across this project. What I can see is on the gable end, there is this beautiful large picture frame window. So the easiest way for me to do that is simply come down to window 25, change that to three meters wide and 2145 I believe was roughly the size. We can adjust that in a minute. Change our materials back to black. Click OK, come back into 3D to make sure that those windows are roughly the right size. It's definitely too wide, too big, and the wrong style. So what I'll do is adjust it to the right height, make sure the levels match, and then I'm gonna reduce the width by about a meter because I think it's too big. Last but not least, I'm just gonna open up those settings and make sure that it is a fixed window rather than a side hung. So fixed glass, okay. And there we go, we have our large picture frame window. Looking at this image here, it looks like these windows are significantly larger. So I'm just gonna drag them out all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna make one of these a sliding door rather than a sliding window. Now we have the fundamental basics of this entire project. What we don't have is the cladding system and the roof system, which makes this project stand out and look so incredible. So the easiest and truly the easiest way to do this is by using CI tools coverings which I'm gonna go into in a lot more detail in the next project. But simply what we need to do is basically select all of our roof, go up to CI tools, coverings, let's go roof covering. And I'm gonna change my roof top to ribbed and I'm gonna extend this profile. So I'm gonna make A about 350, I'm gonna make B nine, C 50, D 18 and E I'm gonna leave as 40. I'm going to make sure that is again black to match our window frames. Click OK and what you'll see is an amazing roof structure automatically created by Archicad. To go into even more detail, if we come back into our ground floor plan, we're gonna see that roof structure appear. So for instance, I'm gonna select just this one roof structure, hit that pink hotspot, which is my downpipe, drag it a little bit across to create the downpipe, and then I'm going to introduce my downpipe in this exact corner as they have it on the reference image. So coming back to 3D, we're gonna see we've created our downpipe very quickly. We can extend that downpipe all the way down to the ground, hide it away from use and sight, and we've been able to replicate that roof structure incredibly quickly and incredibly easily. Now to create this beautiful ash cladding, what we're gonna do is select all of our walls. We're gonna come back into our CI tools, go coverings, and this time we're going to go into our wall coverings rather than our actual roof coverings. So what you can see, you see our tools automatically has a number of profiles set up, which shiplap smooth is exactly what we're looking for in this instance. We're gonna change this to a light oak color so it gives us that beautiful finish that we're looking for. And for the starting purpose of this, we're just simply gonna press okay. 
Then it's gonna ask us, do we wanna put it on the inside or the outside of the wall? Obviously the outside. Clicking once, we're gonna see that completed wood structure. Now, obviously that cladding is way too dark in comparison to what we're looking at in the image. So we could obviously go in and click all of our wall cladding, open up the settings and find a better surface override, a nicer, lighter color. Now, I don't have one personally on file, but it's very easy and very quick to replicate something else. For instance, we could even use something like a Paint White Haven, which would give us that light oak ash color that we're looking for, even though there's little to no wood grain available on that surface now. Now, what you'll notice is the trim basically has also come out in monuments. So if we open up those settings, we can go through all of these settings and change individual trims piece by piece, or we can simply override that entire surface, go to Whitehaven, click OK, and get that nice timber trim that we see in our reference image as well. That's all from me. My name is David Tomic. I'll see you next time.